Senator Rand Paul has been in some high-profile spats recently, both with fellow Republican Chris Christie and the White House. But behind the scenes, Paul has been working with the Obama administration to change how nonviolent offenders are sentenced. That may not come as a surprise if you read his latest book. It's called Government Bullies, How Everyday Americans Are Being Harassed, Abused, and Imprisoned by the Feds. Senator, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. What do you think about the announcement by the Attorney General about these mandatory sentencing, and, and, and how will that change things? You know, I think it's a good step in the right direction. A lot of people don't realize this, but young people sometimes are caught up and make mistakes with drugs, but instead of a judge having the ability to give them a sentence that's appropriate. They're sometimes stuck giving them five, ten, even twenty years with no discretion. So if it's your child or my child and it's their first offense and there were extenuating circumstances, the judge can't listen to any of that. The judge is trapped and has to give them twenty years in prison sometimes. There are people serving life for nonviolent crimes. What about lawmakers who say, look, this mandatory sentencing has gotten a lot of drug abusers and users off the streets, and those kinds of crimes lead to bigger crimes in the future? Well, what it happens is a lot of young people now have criminal records and they can't get jobs, and it's a downward spiral into uh, poverty and more crime. So, what I would say for nonviolent crimes, we need to treat this more like a health problem and less of an incarceration problem. I want to come to the fact that you are agreeing with the White House on this. I mean, what's the common on ground between uh, you and the White House on particular issues? Well, it's interesting. There's probably more than meets the eye. Sometimes people play up differences more than they do similarities. So, for example, on mandatory minimums, this is something I've worked hard on with Senator Patrick Leahy, right. who's from Vermont and a Democrat. I've also worked with him and Mike Lee on another one that says your emails should be protected from and the government snooping. And why can't the Republicans and in the Senate and, and work uh, more often? Uh, in terms of creating that kind of result? Well, it's kind of interesting. Some people think compromise is meeting halfway in the middle, whereas I think you can passionately believe something and still do bipartisanship. For example, Senator Gillibrand, I'm working with her on the sexual assaults in the military, exactly. and it's not that I'm sort of meeting her halfway and we're compromising. I believe as strongly as she does that uh, there's a lot of sexual assaults that go unreported and that justice isn't being served to women in the military, primarily women in the military. One of the big debates in this country, um, in part because of Edward Snowden and his uh, now getting asylum in Russia, has been this question about surveillance in this country, NSA surveillance. Would you have voted, if it came up in the Senate, to decrease funding for the NSA for this types of surveillance? Yes, I think when you get information on someone's records, you should get a warrant, which means the Fourth Amendment says you have to be individualized to the person and the place and what you want. And so I think it's really wrong that we write one order from a secret court and we get everybody's phone records. And I think that's a real mistake. So can I just get you to respond then? And I know this has already been played out, your disagreement with Chris Christie, who said to those libertarians in the Republican oh, Party... you're not going to get me started on that, are you? Well, do you want to get started on it? I guess so. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I mean, there, there, there are two different views about this. And not just in the Republican Party. We should say also in the Democratic agree, Party, to I, be, I to be fair right. about this. But you heard Chris Christie really denouncing the libertarian wing of the party, yeah. um, and that includes I think you. That was a big mistake for him. Why? Well, the thing is, is think about young people and think about what young people are concerned with. We want young people to come to the Republican Party. They don't have any money, so they're not too concerned with taxes and regulations, but they all have a cell phone and they're all on the Internet and they are concerned about their privacy. So I think the Republican Party ought to be the party that, can, that is concerned with and wants to protect your right to privacy. What does it mean to be libertarian, you think, today? You know, I think for the most part it means that you believe sincerely in a strict interpretation of the Constitution, in the Bill of Rights, in privacy. Okay, can I turn to politics for a bit? Uh, you were among those people thinking about running for president. I, the thought has crossed my mind. Yeah, and making trips to Iowa and other places. Right. Um, what will make you decide to run? You know, it's, a, it's an enormous amount of invasion of your privacy to run for a national office, so it'll be a big discussion with my family on whether or not, um, one, we want to withstand the sort of the onslaught and the scrutiny yeah. that you get with this. And really, a lot of it's not fair. It's to your family, to your kids. Yeah. It, it really is something Most that Most politicians that overcome that, don't they? Well, yes and no, and some choose not to. So it is a big decision, and I haven't made my mind You're up. from Kentucky. It looks like at the polls that the minority leader in the Senate, Mitch McConnell, uh, is in trouble. Depends on which polls you look at. I would say the good news for Senator McConnell and someone like myself is that we voted 61 percent for Governor Romney for president and the president 
when he had a Democrat primary, 40% of Democrats voted undecided in the last primary in 2012 when the president was on the ballot against none of the above. 40% voted for none of the above. His campaign manager said he has to hold his nose, and he's also known to be someone who strongly supports you. Yeah, the funny thing about that is I know the campaign manager well, and I've been on a campaign bus with him before, and I'm guessing it's McConnell who has to hold his nose sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning? Oh, well, we'll just have to let that stand as is, you know. But, uh, no, I think that uh, I've, I've met and worked with uh, the campaign manager, and I see nothing but... Uh, sincerity and desire really to have Senator McConnell reelected, and I think he'll do everything within his power to make that happen. And go ahead. I was going to say thank you, but yeah, if you yeah, don't want to ask man, the feud is over with uh, with Governor Christie. Well, I've and, off, I've offered him yeah. a beer and yeah. to have a beer summit. I would even come to New Jersey to have the beer, okay. and I would even buy the beer. But so far, I haven't gotten any a positive response. Uh, can the Republican Party get past these kinds think, of differences the between Republican people who may in, appeal to moderates and people who you know, may appeal to the right? I think the Republican Party is big enough for both of us. It's big enough for all of us. And really, to tell you the truth. People who want to attack the libertarians in the party, the libertarian conservatives in the party, they need to realize our party's not big enough to win right now. We need more people, not less people. All right, Senator Rand Paul, good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. And Government Bullies is on sale now.